located on Premier Hotel Hill, Mokala Ibadan, and we call our grounds Place of Refuge. The Lord says to us that 2021 is the year of resurgence, restoration, and recovery. Hallelujah! As you come along with us, you will surely partake of the same grace. Currently, our Sunday services start at 10 a.m. and on Wednesdays, we meet for prevailing prayers and Bible study at 5.30 p.m. Nigeria time. You are always welcome to join us in any of these programs, either face-to-face -face or live, online, on Facebook or YouTube. The word of God to us this year is from 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8, KJV. Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Welcome to the last house. Well, it's my pleasure to welcome you this evening to service. It's the last, it's the last service for July, and it's a Bible study and uh, prevailing prayers. Whatever you have joined and how you have joined this service this evening, the Lord is here to bless our lives. And I can assure you that God is going to meet you at the point of need in the name of Jesus. So this evening we'll be having, prevail no, we'll be having a time of worship, which will be followed by prevailing prayers, and we'll go to the time of the word. And I can assure you the Lord has prepared his servant who is going to minister to us tonight. So welcome to service. I'd like us to rise up as we take worship now. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you.
name we have worshipped. Good evening everyone. Please let's have a seat. It's time for prevailing prayer. Please let's make use of this opportunity to bring our prayer request. This is a time that we usually pray. We agree with one another and the Lord Almighty is always here is dependable, and it can always be counted upon. Hallelujah. Our word this month is in the book of Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. I want us to look at it. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Hallelujah. And if we look at the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. Hallelujah. Shall we stand up to pray? We are going to pray that fear will be far from us. Because our key word is fear not. But some people will tell you that you don't understand what I'm going through. If you understand what I'm going through, you won't tell me not to fear. You won't tell me not to be afraid. So we are going to pray this evening that Father, help us not to be fearful. Give us the courage and the tenacity to part with fear and anxiety. There are so many things that can make you, you know, you know, that can make you melt in fear. You know, fear is a torment. If you allow it, if you give room to it, it can destroy you. Tell God this evening, 
I want fear to, to go out of my life totally. I don't want to be afraid because you have told me not to be afraid. Father, we push fear out of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we will not fear. Enable us to stop allowing fear to grip us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not allow fear to grip our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to win the battle over worries in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to win the battles over worries, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to have victory over fear and anxiety in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to put our trust. Let us believe you enough to know that you are always there for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Even when that fear comes, we choose not to be afraid in the mighty name of Jesus. We choose not to be afraid, oh God. We choose not to be afraid because your word said that you have not given us the spirit of fear. Yes, the enemy will bring fear, but we choose not to be afraid. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. We will not be afraid, oh God. We will not be afraid, oh God. We will not be afraid, oh God. Address that thing that is causing fear in your heart. Whatever it may be, address it this evening. And tell that thing to leave. In the name of Jesus because God has not given us the spirit of fear. As children of God, we are, we are bold. Yes, I am bold. I will not be afraid in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We want to be able to trust you, Lord. We want to be able to trust you completely in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the grace to trust you completely. Because when we trust you completely, we will not be afraid. In the mighty name of even when fear comes, we will not be afraid. We will confront it. We will not nurse fear in our heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to be bold, oh God. Help us to be bold, oh God. Help us to trust you completely. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Empower us to be strong and courageous, oh God. Empower us to be strong and courageous. In the mighty name of Jesus. Empower us to be bold. Empower us to be courageous. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes, Lord, we will not be afraid. We will refuse to be afraid. We choose not to be afraid in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, this school feels that is causing fear in your heart. Is it your house friend that is causing fear in your heart? Is it your health that is causing fear in your heart? Bring it before God this evening. He has told us not to be afraid. He's there for us. He will do everything that we ever desire. The Lord is always there. He is dependable. He can be counted upon. And he has given all his word. Fear not. I will not fear. I choose not to fear. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I choose not to fear. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is it the doctor's report that is giving you fear? That is gripping your heart? Oh, don't die before your time. Turn it to God. Lift it up unto God. Don't believe the report of the doctor. Believe the report of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. We want to be able to trust you God to trust you completely, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We push fear out of our lives. We push fear out of our lives, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. We push fear out of our lives, O God. We push fear out of our home. We push fear out of our end of all. In the mighty name of Jesus. We will trust in your word. We will depend on you, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of fear will cast you out of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because your word says that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. Father, Lord, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. We uproot fear out of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We cancel every negative report, oh God, that is about us, oh God. Every doctor's report concerning us, we cancel. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. The blood, the blood, the blood that is able to save and able to deliver. 
the blood, the blood of Jesus is better than the blood of Abel. Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We choose not to be afraid. We choose not to fear in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. Because we know that you neither fail nor abandon us. We are not on our own. God is with us. And so we are not afraid in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will not fear in the mighty name of Jesus. We push fear out of our lives, O oh God. We push fear out of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Are you afraid because of maybe your children are not doing well? And so you are afraid. It's taking away your sleep. You are nursing that fear. You are, you are giving room to it. Say, Lord, I choose not to be afraid. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Trust God with your problem. Trust God with that fear. And that fear will disappear. Oh, Father, Lord, we thank you. Father, Lord, we thank you. Yes, Lord, you have not given us the spirit of fear, O oh God, but of love. Help us, O oh God, to love. Help us, O oh God, to love. Help us, O oh God, to love. Because love will, will make fear disappear in our life. Yes, the Bible says perfect love. Perfect love. Perfect love will make fear to go out of your life. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the grace, O oh God, the grace, O oh God, to depend on you. All time we ask that you give unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Remo Sikanda Korea Yaleba Kasekibo. Help us to be able to put our trust in you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you. Rika Basenderia Yaleba Kasekibo. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Our Father and our God, we thank you for a time like this. We give you all glory, all honor, because you are a faithful God. Father Lord, we ask that you continue with us in this service in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you have taken away all our fears. We have chosen to depend on you, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Good evening, church. I hope you have had a very good day today. Shall we pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come before you this evening. We thank you for your grace upon our lives, and we thank you for the opportunity to be here. Lord, we pray that our time here will not be wasted in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, Lord Almighty, that... Your word that we are going to share tonight, Father Lord, will not be the opinion of man. It will not be the wisdom of man. It will be the wisdom from heaven in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will find me worthy and to the glory of your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The word of the Lord to us this month is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10. I read, I'm reading the NKJV version of it. Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hallelujah. When God is saying that we should fear not, I believe there is a reason for it. God is omni signs. He knows all things. So I'm confident that God is aware of all what each and every one of us, what we are going through. He's aware that there is a pandemic ravaging the world. And with its uh, economic setbacks, personal setbacks that the pandemic has caused all over the world, God is aware of that. Is aware that there is hyperinflation in Nigeria. He knows what building materials are saying now. He's aware of the cost of food stock. He knows that many parents are struggling to pay their children's school fees. 
just before I left the house to come to church this evening, a friend of mine called me. He said, Tola, do you know that dollar is 525 today? God knows that we have reasons if we want to walk in the flesh to be afraid. But he's telling us that we should not do it. He's telling us that he has a righteous right hand that can be trusted. And that hand is very strong. He wants us to focus on him and not all the problems that are around us. I remember last year, I think it was about March or so, when the end of, end of pastors declared that there is a blessing in the pandemic. I held on to that statement. Last year, that was the most important statement in my life last year. I never let go of that thing. So whatever it was I was going through last year, no matter how scary it was to build, to continue building, I kept on holding on to that word that there is a blessing in the pandemic. Oh God, I've seen that blessing. I've tasted of that blessing. Also, that same last year, our daughter told me to put in an application to become a resident assistant in a hostel. And she went for the interview and she was not taken. She was not accepted. She was shortlisted, but eventually they said, sorry, we, we have enough. And we found out that Becoming a resident assistant means accommodation will come for you free of charge. You won't have to pay for accommodation. And we, we, my wife, you know, prayed during the um, prevailing prayers. And we thought in our mind that it, that opportunity was gone. But one of the people that was shortlisted, shortlisted, she traveled to China. And the pandemic did not allow her to come back. So Tomisin was called. That singular act saved me five million naira last year. And because she did so well, she's been given the same role, this new academic session. I'm still not going to pay for accommodation. There was a blessing in the pandemic for me and my household. So if God is saying through the same servant that we should fear not, I will advise each and every one of us to pay attention. We shouldn't joke with it. The Bible says that we should believe in the Lord our God and we shall be established. We should believe his prophet and we shall prosper. Me, I intend to prosper. I want to believe that you also intend to prosper. <laughs> May we all prosper in Jesus' name. Why is God saying we should not fear? It is because fear has the power to paralyze. It has the effect of making things look suddenly worse than they are. Fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain, or harm. It's a threat. It is either real or imagined. And the funny thing is that most of what we are scared of, they are imagined. We make our life worse by being afraid of things that will never happen. To overcome fear, whether real or imagined, we must have complete trust and confidence in God. I want us to look at a story as told in the Bible that demonstrates both fear and faith. For the purpose of clearance, I would like to read from the NIV version, and that's why I have my phone with me. 1 Samuel 13. I'll read verses 1 and 2, then I'll jump to verse 5. And I'll read all the way to verse 9. Verse 1 says, Saul was 30, 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned over Israel 42 years. Saul chose 3,000 men from Israel. 2,000 were with him at Michmash and in the hill country of Bethel. And 1,000 were with Jonathan at Gibeah in Benjamin. The rest of the men is sent back to their homes. Let's go to verse 5. Verse 5 says, the Philistines assembled to fight Israel with 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and soldiers as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They went up and camped at Michmash, east of Beth Avon. When the Israelites saw that their situation was critical and that their army was hard-pressed, they hid in caves and thickets among the rocks 
and in pits and cisterns. Some Hebrews even crossed the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. Saul remained at Gilgal, and all the troops with him were quaking with fear. He waited seven days, the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and Saul's men began to scatter. So he said, bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered up the burnt offering. Hallelujah. Saul only had 3,000 men. 2,000 with him, 1,000 with Jonathan. But when the enemy came, their chariots alone was 3,000. They had 6,000 chariots, you know, which means they have two chariots for every chariot. Then they had innumerable number of armies. And when the Israelites saw this, they quaked with fear. The sight is one of the things that the devil used to bring fear to our life. What we see. The Bible tells us very clearly that we should look up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So if we are busy looking around ourselves, the things that are going around, around us, the things that are wrong around us will become fearful. We have to cast our gaze onto Jesus and Jesus alone. Because they were looking at the wrong things. Verse 7 says, they hid in caves because they quaked with fear. Then Saul went ahead to perform a role that God did not give him. And by that, he lost his place in the kingdom. Fear can make a man do foolish things. Fear can make a man do foolish things. Let's go to 1 Samuel. We read night, uh, verse 19. We we'll read all the way to 22. I'm re still reading the NIV version. Let's see why Israel was this fearful. Verse 19 says, Not a blacksmith could be found in the whole land of Israel. Because the Philistines had said, otherwise the Hebrews will make swords or spears. So all Israel went down to Philistine to have their plow points, mattock, axes, and sickles sharpened. The price was two-thirds of a shekel for sharpening plow points and mattocks, and a third of shekel for sharpening forks and axes and for repointing gods. So on the day of the battle, not a soldier with Saul or Jonathan had a sword or spear in his hand. Only Saul and his son, Jonathan, had them. This was the major source of fear for Israel. Because they realized that the, the arsenal they have, vis-a-vis -vis what the enemy has, is not comparable. They, they, they realized their inadequacies. Let me put it that way. They forgot that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. They were looking that with ordinary two swords, how can we face these people? They all ran away. Fear can paralyze. It can cause panic. Loss of ability to move or think. If you can't move and you cannot think, what can you come up with? Fear can destroy I have no doubt that God is trying to shield us from all this and is telling us to focus on him and not what we are going through. You know, in the 1950s, there was this professor called Kurt Richter. That professor wanted to see how rats, how they could survive in water, for how long they can survive in water. So he took a glass, you know, a glass cylinder that had water in it and dropped 12 rats in it. The rat, immediately they entered the water, they started struggling. On the average, you know, average time of 15 minutes, all of them were drowned. So the professor removed them and he put in another set of 12 rats. They were there in the water, they were started struggling. And just before they gave up, he reached out to them and brought them out of the water. He dried them, gave them little time to rest. But a few minutes after, he put them back in the water. Can anybody guess how long they, they stayed in that water? How long they lasted? 20 minutes? 30 minutes? 
one hour, two hours, they stayed 60 hours. 15 minutes to 60 hours. That's 240 times. The time the first set, it took the first set to drown. Times 240 times. The first set, they had no consciousness of a savior. They had no expectation. The moment they hit water, they were afraid. They paddled with all their might and they became tired. The second set, they had the consciousness of a savior. They had hope that rescue will come. They were not as fe fearful as the first set and see how long they lasted. Fear truly has torment. The entire camp of Israel was so afraid they could do nothing but hide in caves. Like the first set of rats, they had no consciousness of a savior. They gave up. But we thank God that there was somebody in that camp who knew what to do. He had the consciousness of a savior. Let's see what that person did. Let's flip to the same first Samuel chapter 14. We'll be reading a long We'll be reading from verse 1 all the way to verse 15. So bear with me. One day, Jonathan, son of Saul, I'm still reading the NIV version, said to his young armored bearer, come, let us go over to the Philistine outpost on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Saul was staying on the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree in Migron. With him were about 600 men, among whom was Ahijah, who was wearing an ephod. He was the son of Ichabod, Brother Haitob, Ichabod's brother Haitob, son of Phineas, the son of Eli, the Lord's priest in Shiloh. No one was aware that Jonathan had left. On each side of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistines' outpost was a cliff. One was called Boses and the other Sene. One cliff stood to the north towards Michmash, the other to the south of Giba. Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, Come, let us go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. Do all that you have in mind, is Amod Bera said. Go ahead, I'm with you, heart and soul. Verse 8. Jonathan said, come on then. We will cross over towards them and let them see us. If they say to us, wait there until we come to you, we will stay where we are and not go up to them. But if they say, come up to us, we will climb up because that will be a sign that the Lord had given them into our hands. So both of them showed themselves to the Philistines outpost. Look, said the Philistines, the Hebrews are crawling out of their holes where they were hiding in. The men of the outpost shouted to Jonathan and his armor bearer, come up to us and will teach you a lesson. So Jonathan said to his armored bearer, climb up after me. The Lord has given them into our hands, into the hand of Israel. Jonathan climbed up using his hands and feet with his armored bearer right behind him. The Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armored bearer, followed and killed behind him. In that first attack, Jonathan and his armored bearer killed some 20 men in an area of about half an acre. Verse 15. Then panic struck the whole army, those in the camp and field, and those in the outpost and raiding parties, and the ground shook. It was a panic sent by God. Hallelujah. In verse 6, we could see clearly that Jonathan had the consciousness of a savior. He told his armored bearer that God has no limitation. Whether you are many or you are few, God can always come to save. And thankfully also, Jonathan had with him someone who could help fan his faith into flame, not someone who would discourage. In verse 7, the armored bearer said, I'm right behind you. Let's go. He didn't say, ah, only two of us. What can we do? This is suicide mission. He was ready to encourage his master to fight the battle. He knew that God never loses a battle. 
Who are you surrounded with? Who do you share your vision with? Now, if we go to verse 15, God sent panic into the camp of the enemy. Why didn't he send this panic earlier? He didn't send it earlier because God only rewards those who diligently seek him. God is someone who cannot walk with fear. He can only walk with faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. There was nobody apart from Jonathan who was ready to put their faith into action. So there was nothing for God to work with. The moment God sensed that there was someone who was not focusing on how bad the situation was, but was focusing on the awesome power of God, God acted. The same fear that kept Israel in the caves was the same fear that God used to destroy the enemy. He says he sent panic among them. Fear is a weapon. Is it in the hand of the enemy or in the hand of God? Fear is a weapon. And the Bible says fear has torment. I want us to pay attention to one thing. When Peter saw Jesus walking on water in the Gospels, he cried to Jesus and said, well, if it is you, Tell me to come. And Jesus told him to come. And while his gaze was on Christ, he had no problem walking on water. The moment he looked at the storm, he started to sink. He gave in to fear. He started with faith. Then he allowed fear to creep into his heart. We can't claim we trust God and still allow fear to rule our hearts. Our results will be limited. The problem is that we are like Israel. We focus on the fact that we have only two swords. We focus on our inadequacies. We are supposed to leverage on the power and the awesomeness of our God and the fact that he's faithful, he never fails, he doesn't lose a battle. All I know is that the word of God has made it clear that we have enough. And while we, where we are, and our current experiences are what God will use to elevate us. We have enough. And where we are, our current experiences that God will use to elevate us. The same two swords was enough to defeat the enemy. So, what I'm saying to you tonight, which is also the title of this Bible study, is fear not, you have what it takes. Fear not. You have what it takes. God doesn't rescue the strong. Our God, he doesn't rescue the strong. But he's quick to rescue a weakness that trusts in a strong, righteous right hand. You have enough. All you need to do is to walk with God. Moses only had a rod. And that was all God needed to end 430 years of slavery. David only had a sling. But it was enough for God to use to destroy a strong man. I said earlier, God doesn't rescue the strong. But he's right beside the weak. And his power is enough to make us strong. Hallelujah. Can we imagine if David had prayed? that God should not let him face the lion or the bear. If God had answered that prayer, David would have been happy. But he would have been ill prepared for the battle with Goliath. At times, I can imagine some of us, if we had the experience of David, the moment we saw the lion, that was the end of going to that place again. We'll bind the lion and bind all the sheep. We'll run away. The HOP said in the clarion call, I think two Sundays ago, he said, God makes us lie in green pastures. And it means he compels and coerces us. He applies firm 
pressure. My admonition to us today is that we should not despise that pressure. Whatever pressure you are going through, do not despise it. It could be the catalyst that God will use for your elevation. Fear not. You have all that it takes. When Peter needed to pay his tax, Jesus did not hide the coin in a coconut. Peter was not a farmer. He's a fisherman. Jesus knew that in, he has the skill to get the coin out of the mouth of the fish. I don't know what you have in your hand. It's enough for the Lord to bless. You should not fear. Hallelujah. Now, let's quickly go, because the time is fast spent, to what we should do to keep fear from taking control of our hearts. What are the things we need to do to eliminate fear? The first one is that we should recall past victories whenever you think there's a reason to be afraid. I remember any time I think about school fees, the tendency is for me to, to get scared. Like this afternoon when my friend called me. But each and every time I will recall, recall how I wanted to sell one house, I prayed to God that people would come and fight over it. Two people actually came to fight over it. And the second person did not collect his money. He said I should build another one. God that did that, his power is not diminished today. So I use that to encourage myself. And I realize each time I do that, fear runs away from me. Number two, always make the right confessions. Always make the right confessions. I remember, I think I've shared this in church too before. At the site, we had just finished the construction of a decking slab. Out of eight, we had just finished the second one. So the following day, I went on that slab and I looked and I looked at the size of the site and fear wanted to enter my heart. That, how did I get myself into this? How will I finish this? The stress I've gone through to do too. To now think that I have another six. How will I do this? But immediately that thought came. I didn't let it dwell. I looked to heaven and I said, if God could suspend this heaven without pillars, what can he not do? I'm happy to report to you that on Sunday we completed the eighth decking. Done. Eight decades in one year. I did not think I could pull it through. But I did not allow negative confession to dwell in my heart. Always make the right confession. That's number two. Number three. It's actually a quote by a man named Dale Carnegie. He was a billionaire. He says, if you want to conquer fear, don't sit at home and think about it. Go out and get busy. We could see that in Jonathan, in the passage you have just read. While others were hiding in caves, thinking about fear, Jonathan stepped out. He did what was within his power to do, and God did the rest. So whenever you want to, con if you want to conquer fear, don't sit at home and think about it. Go out and get busy. Are you still holding up to a job you should have left years ago because of fear? Are you scared you, want, you will lose money if you expand your business? We all need to ditch this fear that are holding us bound. Number four, surround yourself with people who will ignite and not extinguish your faith. We also saw Jonathan doing this. He, he didn't tell his father about what he was going to do. The only person that knew was his armored bear. And I'm sure he had no reason to, sh to hide it from the armored bear. He must have known him over time. Beware of those you share your, your, your vision with. Avoid those who only see impossibilities. We need to avoid those people. Those who see impossibilities, avoid them. When cement was 1,000 naira, some people did not build a house. Now that cement is selling for 4,000 naira, you find it hard to find bricklayers. There's so much construction going on. There's pandemic. The economy is failing. Yet people are building. Nothing is impossible with God. The last and the final one. Control what you feed your mind. There's so much negative news out there. There's so much fake news out there. And they only have one goal. To make us fearful. That's all they want to achieve. Make us panic. 
make us to be fearful. They are designed to make us shift our gaze from God and to look at the problem. The point is this. If you are afraid, what will that achieve? Zero. We worry so much, we have sleepless nights. You wake up in the morning, the problem is still there. The worry has solved no problem. So why don't we give it to the one who, who can solve the problem? Jesus said, come unto me, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest only is with our Father. In conclusion, I want us to always remember that with only two swords, God was able to deliver a whole nation. In your heart, where you are today, you have enough for God to work with. You may not have educational qualifications. You may not have money. You may lack many things. But you have enough for God to bless you with. We have to believe that. So, we have to go out and do exploits. Fear will not hold us down any longer. We need to break free of the fear that has been holding us down. God has said in the word he gave us this month that he will help us with his strong, righteous right hand. What can he not do? Isaiah 43, I'll read verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2. There is the word of God to us. But now, thus says the Lord, your creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. This is God's promise to us. Many of us, the problem is that we don't want to enter the water. The moment we feel we are inside the water, we run back into our shell. The victory is on the other side. We have to go through the water. The assurance is that whatever floater we need, God will provide. We will not sink. So we should go out and do exploit. And may the Lord be with us. Shall we rise? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that we have just shared. Lord Almighty is the little I have. The rest is with you. I pray in the name of Jesus that your word will not fall to the ground without it at achieving the purpose for which you sent it out. I pray, Lord, that everyone that is under the sound of this voice will remember today for good. Lord, we pray that you will banish fear from our lives. Our lives will no longer be ruled by fear. Lord Almighty, you are our God. You are an awesome God. The heaven and earth, they belong to you. Bible says, the cattle upon a thousand hills, they are yours. Gold is yours. Silver is yours. Every need represented here or amongst the people that are watching us online, we present to you today, Father Lord. They are not beyond your reach. Whatever it is we are doing wrong that has not made that thing reachable for us, we pray, Father Lord, that by your spirit you will reveal it to us. We will make the needed correction and your blessing will flow unhindered into every life here. To you be glory, honor, and adoration forever. For in Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Can you tell the next person besides you, fear not? Shall we just listen to the announcements? We'd like to welcome you to the latter house. Glory be to God. We also welcome those watching us online. We are glad you could join us. We thank God for 21 years of fruitful ministry in the latter house. To him alone be all praise for what he has accomplished in our midst. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord to us this month is from Isaiah 41, verse 10, NKJV. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. 
Yea, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. It is imperative that we must continue to maintain social distancing and obey all Nigerian Center for Disease Control regulations. The spread of COVID-19 is still real amongst us, especially with the complications of the Delta variant spreading. So we need to protect ourselves and our loved ones. You need to wear a clean face mask throughout the service and everywhere on the premises. You must also sanitize your hands before entry to the auditoriums. We have zero tolerance for defaulters. Don't let your guard down just yet. TLH Community Service. Since July is our anniversary month, it will be important for all adult members to give back to the community. In view of this, the Latter House Community Service Day we hold this Saturday, July 31st, 2021, from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. And every adult member is expected to participate in the exercise. Today is the last day to register your intent to participate with Brother Tola Akombi immediately after the service so that you can be properly deployed. I'd like to call on Brother Tola to give us further details on this. Yes, uh, Saturday is the day. Eight o'clock is the time. Uh, as of today, we have about 80 people who have registered. I told the church some time ago that we are expecting 100. So please, if you know you have not registered, I don't want to call names. There are some families I know that are prominent in church that are yet to register. So please see me at the end of the service because tonight is the last time we'll have any names on the register. So we'll know how many people to provide for. And when you're coming, we encourage you to please dress appropriately. Wear covered shoes that can protect your feet from getting any kind of injury. Then we we'll also encourage you to wear a, a TLH branded uh, T-shirt. It could be any of the convention shirts that we've had in the past. Then we also plead with you to please come with your implement of uh, uh, work. It can be a cutlass, hoe, brooms, brushes. We actually need brushes. So if you have brushes at home, please bring for us to, to be able to scrub some part of uh, the church. So please, whatever instrument you can bring, kindly come with them. And also... Um, after the, we also want you to please come with your face mask. We don't want you to forget. There is Delta variant going around. The Lord is our cover. But what is within our power, we still have to do. So please don't come without your uh, face mask. And immediately after we finish at about 12 o'clock, we'll have a picnic, which will be a very lovely time. But it is meant for only those who come to join us for work. It's not for every church member. Thank you. Hallelujah. The July Pastors Management Committee meeting will hold today, Wednesday, July 28, 2021, at 7 p.m. prompt. The next service will be our communion service on Sunday, August 1st, at 10 a.m. Nigerian time. It will be, be, it will be both face-to-face -face and online. Our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash TLH expression. Give your written prayer request to the ushers before start of service or send ahead by email to pastor at the latterhouse.org. You can also fill in prayer request in your prayer request anytime on our website, the latterhouse.org, and it will be taken at the next service. It's time to give our tithes and our offerings. You can make bank transfers to guaranteed trust bank account number 0448632. 82. Again, 044-862-3282. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of all grace, bless our sacrifice of love to you as we give now and send your blessings to all areas of our lives 
and to our land where we need your heavenly intervention. At this time, in Jesus' name, amen. We thank you for worshiping with us today, especially if this is your first time. If you are in any of the auditoriums, please identify yourself to an usher so you can collect the gift we have for you. We bless God that you made it and look forward to you joining us again on Sunday at 10 a.m. Until then and beyond, may the Lord bless and keep you. Amen. I have enjoyed today's service with us and we hope you will join us same time next week. For any inquiry or prayer requests, you can contact us through the various channels displayed on the screen. Thank you and God bless you.